Ecclesiastics chapter 8. I'm going to start reading here at verse 1. The text says, Who is as the wise man, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? Praise God. Father, we thank you for the word of truth. The gospel of our salvation. Open up our understanding and depart your divine truth within our inward parts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We just read to you seven verses of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Praise God. Now the word Ecclesiastes means the preacher. Praise God. And Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon, the son of David. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. And when we read uh, this particular portion of scripture, I want to identify verse number four. What the text says, what the word of a king is, there is power. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, a king is an authoritative figure. Hallelujah. The king is one who makes decrees. He's one that gives commandments. And he is a legislator. A legislator is one who is a law giver. Praise God. God not only, amen, is a law giver, but he's the only one that can veto a law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, it tells us over here in Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 22 concerning God being a lawgiver. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 33, and I want to read verse number 22. It says, for the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are you hearing that? Amen. Then if we travel over to the book of James chapter 4, and let's read here verse number 11 and verse 12. It says, speak not evil one of another. He, it says, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one law giver who is able to save and to destroy, who art thou that judges another? Praise God. Now we see by the text here that God himself is our legislator. He is the law giver. He is the one that is able to save and destroy. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us over in our foundation of scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 it says where the word of a king is there is power. Praise God. 
Psalms chapter 29 and verse 4, it says the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Praise God. Somebody said, now, why are you bringing out some of these scriptures? Because I'm trying to show you that the word of a king it is powerful. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And we should never doubt the word of a king. And the king that we are talking about is King Jesus. Somebody give God a praise right there. Amen. Even the Hebrew writer brings it out in Hebrews chapter 4 in verse 12. The text says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Praise God. Now I want you to know that the word of the Lord is powerful. Amen. Come on. Amen. And how many know that Jesus is the king? Amen. Because he is the word of God. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 And I want you to know that everything that Number 19. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Praise God. Listen to the text here. It says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall not he do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Did you see that? Praise God. God is not a man that he should lie. That whatever he has spoken, he's going to make it good. Everything that has proceeded out of his mouth, he will surely bring it to pass. Come on. See, the text says in Ecclesiastes, where the word of a king is, there's power. Amen. How many know that in the creation story, that when God created the heavens and the earth, he spoke it into existence. Amen. Come on. He said in Genesis chapter 1, he said, let there be light. And the spirit of the Lord began to move. And light came about. Come on. Amen. See, his word In Isaiah chapter 55. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 11. Let's start here at verse 10. It says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it Amen. look at that Amen. praise God hallelujah Amen. When God speaks, things happen. You know why? For where the word of a king is, there is power. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus, amen, is the king of glory. He is the Lord 
in Psalms chapter 33. Yeah. Psalms chapter 33. And I want to look here in verse number 8 and verse number 9. It says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Do you see that? Now y'all didn't get that. I'm going to read that one more time. Look at what it says in verse number 9. It says, for he spake and it was done. Commanded his 
disciples to get on the ship. And he told them we were going to the other side. But before they arrived on the other side, there was a great tumultuous wind. Praise God. It was rocking and reeling the ship. It seemed as if they were going to die. Praise God. Amen. And when they went and woke up Jesus, but Jesus said to his disciples, Oh, ye of little faith. Why did he say that to them? Because they did not believe the word. And this is how we are today in the church. God has spake a word. He's given us a word. Whether you heard it through the preaching of the word, whether you heard a prophetic word, whether you heard a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge, God is speaking a word. Amen. He can 
control the winds and the waves. Come on, even devils are subject unto him. Glory to God. Now look at this. In 1 Kings chapter 17, I want to read something over here. During the time of the prophet Elijah, hallelujah, amen, it was prophesied that there would be a famine in the land, praise God, and even though there was a famine in the land, God has spake to the prophet Elijah that he would take care of him. He would sustain him even during the time of a famine. Now I wonder how God is going to do this during this crucial time in this society. Watch this. In verse 1 it says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Look at that. The prophet Elijah is speaking by the Spirit of God. Come on, he has power with God. Hallelujah. To cause the rains to cease from coming up on the earth. Praise God. And at the particular time, he would speak the word. Come on. Amen. Now that's not the part I really want to deal with. But I want to go on and read. Listen to what the text says. In verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying. Get thee hence. And turn the eastward. And hide thyself by the brook Cherith. That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went. Says 
Bible said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. Mm -hmm. But make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make it for thee and thy son. Now, somebody said, well, amen. How could this prophet of God be so selfish? Didn't he hear this widow woman tell him she only has a little meal and a little uh, uh, cruise of oil left to make for her and her son and then they're going to eat it and die because there's a famine in the land. Amen. I think that's kind of selfish for him to ask her to feed me first. And y'all got to understand. Praise God. He was setting this woman up. Amen. For a miracle. Glory to God. Because in her putting the man of God first, she was putting God first. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? Praise God. And if you look at verse 13, the prophet said, I want you to make me a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and thy son. Now, if you can really look in the text there, come on. He was surely telling this woman that you ain't going to run. Amen. Out of food. Come on, somebody. Just put God first. Put him foremost in every area of your life. Come on and praise him. shall not waste. Now I gotta understand the prophet Elijah is speaking by the spirit of God. This is why you got to have relationship. This is why you got to have an ear to hear what the spirit of God is saying. Come on somebody. This man is speaking by the spirit. Come on he is telling this widow woman what God is saying to him. Are you listening? He said, This barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Did you see that? Do you remember, amen, what was said back in Judah in 2 Chronicles chapter 20? He said, Believe the Lord. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Listen to what the prophet Elijah is declaring to this widow woman. He said, he said, you will not waste of the barrel amen, that contains the meal. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went. Hey! 
Amen. And then when so God got somebody sanctified, Amen. When He commands them, they will be obedient. The Bible says He commanded the widow woman to sustain the prophet. And is she not obeyed? This is why it's so important to understand that we must be led by the Spirit. Come on. And we got to say what God say. You can't say anything contrary to what God is not saying. Are you listening to me? Come on. You got to try every spirit that come into your mind. You got to try it by the word to see if it's of God. Because I don't want to say anything that Say, I don't want to speak anything that God didn't speak. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Hello? Somebody put your hands together and give them a clap of them in the name of Jesus Christ to show that the living God. to be proud. His word will not return unto him void. This is why I want people to understand the validity of the word. Where the word of a king is, there's power. Everything he decrees, he commands, it stands fast. Come on somebody. Glory to God. When God speaks, you can trust it. Because God is not a liar. We just gave you the scripture. In Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should Repent. Amen. Hebrews 6 and 18 says it's impossible for God to lie. Amen. Come on. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It also teaches us over here in Titus chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. It says, Paul, a servant of God. And an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but has in due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. Praise God. Did you hear what I said? And I don't care what's going on in your life. You need to stand on the word of God. You need to trust in Jesus with your whole heart. Because if he said it, he gonna bring it to pass in your life. Come on, somebody. Amen. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Stop allowing your trials to overtake you, to smother you, to choke the faith of God out of your heart. Come on. You need to learn to stand on the word and begin to confess with your mouth that God's word is true. You need to begin to speak God's word over your own life. You need to begin to say what God said. And in due time, going to bring it to pass. Come on. Amen. Anyone who refuses to repent and turn to Jesus that they might, amen, get saved. Guess what? God's word don't come to pass. He said you're going to perish. Did he tell you that in Luke 13, 3 and 5? He said repent or you all are going to likewise perish. Well, guess what?
One scripture says in Luke chapter 9, chapter 11, verse 9 to 13. He said, if you ask, it shall be given you. If you seek him, you'll find him. If you knock, the door will be open. If an evil man know how to give good gifts to his children, amen, how much more will God give the Holy Ghost to them that Right. Come on. Now, 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 we gotta, we gotta put it in reverse. Because before you ask God to fill you, you got to do something that he told you to do before that. He told you to repent. He told you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. What you mean by that? You got to believe that he is the son of the living God. And it was he that died on the cross. Amen. Yeah. 
trust God. You got to know that his word is true. I don't care what lying spirit says otherwise. I don't care what false prophet or false apostle or false teacher says. Praise God. If you speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in you. begun doubting the word of God. People got to understand that the king is an authoritative figure. Mm -hmm. He makes decrees, he makes commands, mm -hmm. and he legislates. Amen. Huh? Amen. And how many know he don't apologize? Amen. Everything he says shall be. Galatians 5, beginning at verse 22, verse 17, rather. Now, I want everybody to understand this. Galatians chapter 5, let's start at verse 19, I'm sorry. Galatians 5, 19, he said, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which of these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Did that command come from God? Absolutely. It came from God. Amen. By way of the Apostle Paul. Amen. Come on, did the Apostle Paul teach us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14? Amen. He said, the things that I write are the commandments of the Lord. Where the word of a king is, there's power. This is a command. Yes, it is. And this is why you should never overlook anything, my brothers and sisters. You don't overlook the things that God has said. When he said, have no other gods before me, was that a command? Yes, man. Come on. Yes. The king has made a command. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yes. And when he said, have no, have no other gods before me, that's exactly what he meant. Amen. 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 Even his apostle confirmed it. In 1 John 5, 21, he said, little children, 
consent? Amen. Glory to God. When he says, wives, submit yourself to your husbands in everything. He didn't say some things. Now, of course, as long as it doesn't contradict the word of God. Come on. You're to submit yourself to your husband. No, you're not to share authority with your husband. Come on. You're not the one to make all the decisions. And him with his girly self. Hey, man, he's scared to tell you, no, we ain't doing that. Come on, somebody. Y'all getting quiet on Pastor Walker. Glory to God. God has made a command. He said, why submit to your husband? Now, if that husband telling you to do something that's against his word, you have every right to disobey him because he wouldn't have you disobeying God. Come on, somebody. You don't do anything your husband tell you to do that's going to cause you to sin against God. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's why it's important that husbands be subject upon the authority of their head, which is Jesus Christ. Because they'll lead you right. Amen. Huh? Amen. Come on. Amen. They'll lead you right. But when that knucklehead is just out there in the flesh doing his own thing. He ain't nothing but selfish. Everything he says, every decision he makes, it ain't for the benefit of the family. It all benefits him. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. You got to watch that lying spirit. Hello. Somebody need to, amen, talk with me today. Are you listening to me? Amen. Because God ain't raising no Jezebels. <laughs> Come on. You're going to be a daughter of Sarah. If you're going to take the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be virtuous. You're going to be in subjection to your husband. Come on. You're going to have godly character. You're going to walk in righteousness and holiness. to walk with him. Glory to God. Where the word of a king is, there's power. Whatever God says, I don't care if you don't see it, believe it. Huh? You don't see Jesus coming yet, have you? But he said he's coming. Uh, blessed are the people that have not seen, but yet believe. Come on. He said, I'm going to destroy him. That's what he said. He said, I'm going to destroy him. Did God speak? He said, I'm going to destroy him. But the Bible says, the man of God stood between God and the children of Israel. And he began to intercede for them. He said, Lord, if you destroy him, he said, the heathens will say that he delivered them out of Egypt to bring them into the wilderness to come. Hallelujah. And Moses, see, that, see this, this is a man of God right here. This is, this is somebody who has the heart of God. He has the love of God. Hallelujah. Even though the children of Israel deserve judgment, come on, they made a golden calf, bowed down to it, and said, this be the God that brought us out of Egypt. Glory to God. God saw it. And he said, get out the way. He said, I'm going to destroy them. Praise God that the men of God stood in the gap, made up the hedge, and said, Lord, don't destroy them. Don't kill them, Lord. Praise God. And the Bible says, because of Moses, because of the men of God, 
And the only reason why God won't destroy us is because of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is our intercessor. Yes. Romans yes. chapter 8. He makes intercession for the saints. Come on. Yes. Every time you come to the throne of grace and he begins to plead for mercy. Come on. Have a Jesus. Amen. Who is your advocate? Come on. Amen. Stands in the gap. Amen. And pleads for you. Come on. That God will have mercy. And because of Jesus. Because of the blood that he shed. God shows mercy. And forgives us. Come on somebody. By the word of the king. There is power. Louder than that when they heard their stimulus was coming. Yeah. You idol worshiper, you. Amen. 